presence of the Holy Spirit. Boy, we have to, in these days and in these times, we have to really make sure that we are staying in the presence of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Basking in his presence. Staying in his presence. Hallelujah. For he too is God, the third person of the Trinity. You know, it's, in, it's interesting that many times people don't consider Holy Spirit um, God like they do Jesus or like they do the Father. Amen. And they kind of like, it's almost kind of like the Holy Spirit is kind of like kicked to the curb a little bit. He is the one who's manifesting in the earth. He is the one that's doing the work in the earth. This is the age of the church is Holy Spirit time. That's right. It's Holy Spirit time. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. And it is his presence that we need operating daily. I said that we need operating daily in our lives. Praise God forevermore. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you. Well, are you ready for the word of God? You got your weapon with you today? Are you armed and dangerous? Let's hold that weapon up. Say, Jesus is Lord. The Holy Spirit leads and guides me into all truth. Thank you, Father, for your word. For your word is true. Your word your word causes me to operate in victory as I am led by the Holy Spirit in everything that I do. And I thank you, Father, for this word. For this word is true. It's designed to bring me victory in everything I do. And I receive it as being done in my life in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you as I go forth and bring forth your word today that I do so in the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We trust and rely on you, Father. And I thank you that the ears of the hearers shall be graced by your word today. I thank you, Father, right now that as we minister your word, it will cause them to grow, continue to grow into trees of righteousness the planting of the Lord that you, Father, would be glorified. And so we give you all the praise and give you all of the glory in the mighty and in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, praise the Lord. Let's turn in our Bibles to uh, 1 Corinthians, praise God. Amen. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I had uh, started a couple, about a week or so ago on a Wednesday, I started teaching on concerning the real world. That was the title. And so I'm getting ready to pick that back up because it's vitally important that we get the information that uh, Paul was teaching the church at Corinth. Now we understand the church at Corinth was a church that had all the gifts of the spirit in operation, even though they were a very young church. And in that letter, Paul had to teach them how to to operate properly uh, with the Holy Spirit. See, we have to operate with the Holy Spirit. Amen? And so it's important, particularly where we are in time right now, in these last, in this last sliver of time or these last hours or seconds before uh, the Lord Jesus comes to, re to redeem the church to himself, we need to be more proficient in operating in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Yes. So chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians in verse 1 it says this, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Now, he is telling us that, you know, there's information. See, many times people hear the word ignorant and they take it as a, uh, it has a negative connotation. The enemy has made it a negative connotation when people hear it because of the way people say it to folk. Right, right. All right. So people get an attitude, are you ignorant, this and that. Well, ignorance just means that you lack information on a certain subject. Right. Amen. I'm ignorant when it comes to flying 
flying 747s, when it comes to flying F-1 uh, fighter jets. I'm ignorant, okay? I don't have the proper information in order to be able to do that, nor the skill level. There are things that uh, I am ignorant at, amen? Just like every person is ignorant in certain things. So the word ignorant is not a negative word. It's just, a, it's just one word that says you don't have the information on this. And because you don't have the information doesn't make you dumb, doesn't make you uh, any less uh, smart of a person. It's just that you don't have that information. Amen. amen. I was just reading, I picked up some information yesterday a day before yesterday that I was ignorant of uh, as I was reading in the book of Revelation and I was reading in chapter 7 and I looked at the first two verses where it talked about how, the, how God gave the four angels who control the winds. Angels control the winds. And so I gave them authority to take wind out of the earth. And I was like, wow. Okay, now, now I've been studying Revelations um, for decades. Yes. Okay. Even before I got saved, I wanted to know something about, I wanted to know what this book was about. And uh, so, I, so I was just led by the Holy Spirit. Do you really know what kind of effect that's going to have on the earth? Yeah. And I said, well, no, I don't. So I looked up and I, I, I did a search. What happens if there's no wind on the earth? And I found a site that, that says, what if, and then you put in whatever. So I put that in there and it came up and it printed and I got this whole, this whole detail explanation. And in short, what takes place, if there is no wind, then it affects the entire planet. Of course, you would know that. But in a way in which it would make this planet uh, a much less inhabitable place to live. The temperature at the equator would, uh, at the equator areas would dramatically rise up. The temperature at the poles would dramatically drop. Okay, so they would force people from uh, different parts of the world to begin to migrate to other portions of the earth. It would cause the ecosystem to, to uh, be turned upside down. It would cause food preparation and food growth uh, to, be, to uh, get into a shortage. So you'd be looking almost at a worldwide type of a famine. And so these are just some of the results. Now, you, without wind, you can still fly airplanes. But it's going to cause the cost of fuel to go up because it's going to take far more fuel to get that plane airborne without the wind. So it has a, a, a very, very detrimental effect on the earth when they get to that point in that chapter 7, verse 1 and 2, when the angels stop the wind at God's command. Wow. Now, I read that. I said, my gosh. If that's all I know about the book of Revelation, what's going to take place, I don't want folk to have to deal with that. You know, I, I, can, I can't even imagine what that would possibly be like, the, the untold pain and suffering that is going to be on people yeah. when the wind stops blowing. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't say how long it was going to stop blowing. Amen. But it said it's going to stop blowing. That they was going to hold the wind back. And when they hold the wind back, the next thing that it talked about was that God was going to anoint 144,000 Jews from all the tribes of Israel, males who are, who are single to go forth and to witness and to share the gospel. Amen. So, and so I was very ignorant of that until just the other day. They didn't make me stupid. Amen. It didn't make me dumb. And I'm making a point about the word ignorant here. Anybody here ignorant about some things? Do you consider yourself stupid? No. You consider yourself dumb? No, it's just that you don't have the information. Amen. Amen. So Paul is saying to the church, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. So really what he's telling them is that if you don't understand the real operation of the real world, I don't want you to be ignorant. This is information you need. Why am I using the term real world? Because he said spiritual things. Yes. God is a spirit. Amen. Yes. Everything that we see in the earth came from God and it came out of the spirit realm. Yes. So you have to ask yourself your question, if what creates a thing 
is more is is what creates the thing more real than the thing that is created. My God. Hey, let me say that again. Is what creates a thing more real than the thing that is created? Of course it is. Because without what created it, you don't have that. That does not exist. So God is a spirit, and he's talking about spiritual things here. So he's talking about concerning the real world. And that's what we need to know and become more proficient in. In these last days, in this time where we see all kind of crazy stuff going on, being more proficient and operating in the real world to affect this world we live in. Amen. 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 He goes into verse two and says, you know that you were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore, I give unto you to understand that no man speaks by the spirit of God, uh, speaks by the spirit of God, calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Ghost, which is a very important part. I remember before I was saved, I couldn't, there was no way I would even con consider saying that Jesus is Lord of my life. It wouldn't come out. It wouldn't come out. Amen. That's, a, that's, a, that's really becomes a good way in which to test a person to see if, if they got the Holy Ghost on the inside because they're not going to be able to say that unless it's by the Holy Spirit. Isn't that what that just said? Amen. Amen. No man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Amen. So, verse 4, now therefore are diff now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. So he goes on here in verses 4, 5, and 6, ta and 7, talking about the operations of these gifts, which have been given by God through the Holy Spirit, so that we can work the real world system into this world we live in. Amen. Amen. And not rely on the world we live in, but rely on the real world to get things done in this world. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, I was, and even in my study of Revelation, I looked at the scripture where it talked about how the heavens were rolled away as a scroll. And you think, you think about how a scroll, you know, a scroll is rolled up when it's open. And then if it's rolled up, it does like this and it reveals what's behind the scroll. And that spoke to, to me, to my heart, that we always look up for heaven. Okay, we always point up for heaven. But when you read that particular passage in uh, scripture in Revelation, it gives you the sense that heaven is like right here. And if you roll it, roll it up like a scroll, roll the atmosphere up and the heavens up like a scroll, you're going to be right there. Lord. Amen. So you kind of like when a person leaves, they step over. Yeah. Amen. They step over because it rolls up. It's another dimension. Hallelujah. And I don't want to go further into that because I start getting over into portals and angels and let me stick to this. Amen. All right. So he talks about here in verse four, there are diversities of gifts, same spirit. There are differences of administration, same, same Lord. There are diversities of operations. It's the same God which works on all. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man. Say every man. Every. Every man. To profit with all. So the gifts of the spirit are given to every man. Now keep in mind, not every, every man, but every man to whom this letter is written to. And that means that's you and I, the church. So this is the every man within this uh, verse he's talking about. And so these manifestations of the spirit are designed to bring forth a prophet. Amen. Okay, now, many times when people hear the word profit, they think in money. Well, we're not thinking about money. We're talking about the word profit. Profit is increase. It is gain. And that could be anything. I right, listen to me. You have, you're, you're a gardener. You get some seeds. You go plant some seeds. The plant grows up. What did you do? You just had increase and gain from that plant to bring up another plant, right? From that seed, rather, to bring up another plant. Verse 8, for one is given by the Spirit, and then he goes in and, and, and then starts talking about these different giftings. 
word of knowledge, word of wisdom uh, given by the same spirit, another faith by the same spirit, another gifts of healing by the same spirit, another the working of miracles to another prophecy, praise the Lord. Uh, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. But notice it says, but all of these work that's that one and self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he wills. So God gives these gifts or the manifestation of these gifts to every man. Praise the Lord. Amen. Every believer has the ability as God determines it in that particular time to operate and manifest in these gifts. That means that you and I are supposed to be operating in these gifts as we walk through this life. But even more so, I believe, in these last days, Amen. Because these gifts are truly needed now because there's so much confusion that the enemy, so much, so much of the doctrine of devils that the enemy is, is just uh, setting up out there that people, even, conf even Christians are confused about a lot of different things particularly if they haven't really been serious about what God is, God's word is and, and about their walk with God. Amen. Amen. This is no time to be drawing back from God. This is a time to be drawing closer to God because the closer you draw to him, the closer he draws to you. Amen. Hallelujah. So again, we have these gifts and these gifts for our benefit, we break them up into categories. So you have the first three gifts. Oh, these gifts, I'll, I'll just, I'm not going to label them as, as you know, any more important than any other. But we have these three categories based on what the gifts do. So you have the revelation gifts. These are gifts that reveal things. Amen. And, and, and really today, you really want to be able to have these gifts in operation, be ready and sensitive for these gifts to be in operation in your life. And as we study this, you may find out that you have been operating in some of these revelatory gifts more than you knew or didn't realize that you were. Amen. Amen. So these are the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, as well as discerning of spirits. And I believe that's, to me, I believe that's one of the most important ones, discerning of spirits because of all of the demonic activity that's taking place in the earth. Amen. There is a new, there's going to get ready to be a new wave of, how can I say, uh, doctrine of devils is getting ready to be perpetrated. It's being set up now, being getting ready to be perpetrated on the people of earth, not just the United States, but on the people of earth. All right. And they're calling it full disclosure. And the full disclosure is dealing with UFOs. Have you noticed that you have been over the last several years and really over the last year and a half seeing more tidbits from quote unquote government sources talking about the reality of these objects that are flying that they do not know what they are, where they come from. Right. And so we're seeing a little bit of disclosure here, a little bit of disclosure there, a little bit of disclosure here. Okay of these quote unquote UFOs, unidentified flying objects. They actually have changed the name from unidentified flying objects to, to another three letter uh, acronym as it were, in order to shift the thinking of people from the term UFO because they have over the years, over the decades, they have labeled anyone who talks about UFO, they've labeled them kooks, conspiracy theorists, all this kind of stuff, right? So now that they want to reveal truth, or truth is about to be revealed regarding this stuff, they're changing the name so they can then change the narrative about what it is that they are talking about when it's still the same 
as it was before. There's no difference in the information. It's just how they're going to frame it. That's it. Amen. Now the enemy, well, that's why I said discerning of spirits is going to have to be one that you want to seek God on because these gifts, you can seek God to have them operate in your life. Amen. The word of God says desire, 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 desire the best gifts. Amen. So if you're going to desire something, that means that you have a longing for it. Amen. That means you're going before God saying, God, I, I, I want to be in a position where I am available for you to flow in word, through me with word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning of spirits, the power gifts, gift of faith, Faith, working of miracles, gift of healings, okay? Or the uh, utterance or inspirational gifts, prophecy, uh, diverse kinds of tongues and interpretation of tongues. And that, and those uh, utterance and, and inspirational gifts are probably the gifts that most folk who are in spirit-filled type churches have more acquaintance with in its operation. Amen. Because they will hear tongues go forth in the service in the proper way. And then they'll have an interpretation. An interpretation will come forth. So those are gifts of the spirit in operation, probably more so in the body of Christ than the others that are recognizable by the general church. You follow what I'm saying? Amen. They're probably the most common, if I can use that, in, in this operation that the people recognize. The tongues, interpretation of tongues. Okay? Diverse kinds of tongues. Things of that nature. But the other six uh, may not be so common. And we need to understand how they work individually, and we need to understand how they work collectively, and how one or two may work together, two or three or four might work together, and depending on the situation and what God needs to get done. That's why we have to have this revelation and this realization of things concerning the real world or spiritual things. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. All right. So we look at these gifts. Now, the gift that we're going to look at today is word of knowledge. Now, this is a gift that many people probably have operated in and didn't realize. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm talking about believers. Okay. They operated in this gift, did not necessarily realize that they were operating in it. And because of that, they would make a statement like this. Something told me. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Hear that? Something told me. Now, that really kind of irks me when I hear believers say that. Yeah. Because they should know that it's not just something. Mm -hmm. It's the Holy Spirit. Yeah. But because language has been controlled by the enemy for so long, okay, he has dumbed down our revelation of of, of the proper wording to say in situations. And so he's gotten man to say something, something, something before they come to know the Lord. And then it carries over after they know the Lord. And after they get filled with the Holy Spirit, that, that, that language and the use of that language carries over. And if they don't make a conscious decision to recognize what's happening, they will continue to, 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 to delegate Holy Spirit to something, mm -hmm. just something, you know, something told me, something told me, something oh, told me, gosh. something told me, something told me when it's the Holy Spirit that's been yeah. telling you all the time. Anybody here recently over the last, let's say several months, uh, uh, made a decision and picked up on something and you made the move on it and it was the right move or you recognize something on someone and the temptation was for you to say, wow, something told me, something told me to do that. Something told me because we haven't realized how the enemy has carried over our understanding of the, of certain words and how we use those words towards talking about God or talking about the Holy Spirit. So it's always something. Something, but we need to make sure we understand that something is God, that something is the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. Okay? Amen. All right. Now, let's understand some things about word of knowledge. Word of knowledge, first of all, is not natural knowledge. Okay? Word of knowledge is not natural knowledge at all. So you don't get word of knowledge out of a book. Hello. Right. <laughs> word of knowledge is is not profound knowledge of the Bible. Because you went to Bible school or because you were trained in ministry school doesn't mean that you operate in word of knowledge. Keep in mind that the church that Paul was writing this letter to, Corinthians, was a very young church. But they loved God and they were, and they were open and receptive to the move of the Holy Spirit. And he was moving. Wherever the Holy Spirit is welcome, he's going to move. Yeah, come on. Amen. Yes. You have churches where he's not welcome. There's no movement. If he's welcome in your church, you're going to have a move of the Holy Spirit. Yes. And the move will get greater and greater and greater as the people desire and hunger more of yes. the Holy Spirit moving within them and within their service. Because when he moves within you and then we come together, then we have even more. That's why I talk about bring your, your uh, supply of the anointing. Yes. We have to the anointing is. The anointing is Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't do anything miracle wise until he was anointed by the Holy Ghost. That's right. And once he was anointed by the Holy Ghost, that's when, and he was always receptive to the Holy Spirit, he began to move in those different gifts. Amen. And we're going to take a look hopefully today at one of the gifts, uh, the, the word of knowledge in a situation that he dealt with. And when we see this, then we tend to think, well, he was Jesus. That was Jesus, you know. We don't tend to think about Jesus operating as we are, just a man. Hear Jesus, and you think God, so he's Jesus on the earth. Even though you might know that he's not operating as God, we don't really get the revelation that he was not operating as God. He was operating like you and I. We don't make the connection between us and him in operation with the Holy Spirit. He operated the same way in which we are supposed to operate. Now, word of knowledge is this. Word of knowledge is certain facts that God reveals to you from his mind. Or as God knows everything, right? Mm -hmm. And so he has information you don't have. Yeah. And so that something that told you something and it turned out to be right was information coming from the mind of God by the Holy Spirit to you because it was something that was a fact. Yeah. It was a fact. I right, listen to me. Facts from the mind of God revealed to you word of knowledge. Now, one of the reasons why it's called word of knowledge is because he doesn't give you a complete paragraph. <laughs> He's not giving you everything. He's giving you just a word. That's why we always talk about you got a word from the Lord. You got a word. You can get one word from God that will turn everything around and change everything around. Amen. Amen. So the word of knowledge is information given to you by Holy Spirit or revealed to you by Holy Spirit directly from the mind of God, certain facts. Now, not all information that God has is fact as we are concerned. And what I mean by that is this. There is information that God has about things that haven't happened. Come on, come on. Amen. We're talking about things that that God knows that already have happened, but you don't know. Come on. Teach this. All right, listen to me. Amen. Amen. There are things that's going on in your lives right now that I don't know about. And if you don't tell me or someone who's who is uh privy to the situation or the circumstance or the event or whatever it might be that you know that they know, right? And if they don't tell me, then I'm not going to know unless it is revealed to me by a word of knowledge by the Holy Ghost because God knows. So it's already, something has already happened in your life. It is a fact because it has already happened. It's not something that is about to happen because that's not a fact. That's future. 
I listen to me. And we'll get over into that more when we get into, as we continue to move on in these gifts. Praise the Lord. So a word of knowledge does not come because you have close communion with God either. All right. There's people who've been to Bible schools, who have profound knowledge of the word of God, who have a daily walk with God, who never have a manifestation of the word of knowledge. All right. Because the word of knowledge is not facts, it's not information that you can pick up out of a book. I'm not going to get word of knowledge reading the Bible. Word of knowledge is going to come from Holy Spirit. When Holy Spirit reveals something that is a fact in the mind of God, and then he reveals it to me, and I know it, then I got a word of knowledge. And many times we've operated in word of knowledge, talking to folk, ministering to folk, not even realizing what we are saying to them. Amen. I remember, I remember this instance, I don't remember it in detail, but my wife uh, really recounted it to me, um, not recently, this is several years ago, this is a long time, we weren't even here, we hadn't even gone to Mississippi at that time, and we were... Uh, we ran across a, a young lady, and I didn't know who she was. I didn't know too, too much about her. My wife knew her, had been managing to her or something, or, or something. And so we were talking, and all of a sudden, I just started talking. And I just started saying stuff, and I didn't realize till afterwards. Uh, you might remember this. You know what I'm talking about, right? Um, and I still don't remember everything that took place, but my wife told me later that you were telling her things about her that I know you did not know. Yes. Amen. And caused certain things to change in her life mm -hmm. prayerfully. We don't know where she is now, but at that point in time, amen. That was an op and I, I didn't feel any different. That's it. That's it. Amen. I didn't, I didn't have any, any kind of a physical feeling. Right. I didn't have the hair to stand up on the back of my neck. I didn't have to go do all that kind of stuff and do a lot of the shenanigans folks say of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen. I just started talking and was saying things to her that I knew nothing about in my natural mind. But what God was doing was speaking through me a word of knowledge yes. to her because it was a fact in his mind. I listen to me. All right. So I didn't get it out of a book. I didn't get it because I went to school of ministry. I got it because I was open to Holy Spirit. Amen. And you got to remember being open to Holy Spirit doesn't mean you got goosebumps and that you feel something. That's right. Amen. Uh -huh. And see, a lot of times that's what we're looking for. We're looking for things that we're looking for a feeling to, uh, to validate whether we have a move of God or not. <laughs> It's not a feeling. God is not a feeling. Holy Spirit is not a feeling. Although you can have a sensation or a feeling from time to time when Holy Spirit is moving. But that's not what you look for. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Let's go to the book of Acts. Amen. Hallelujah. You really want, to, really want to do a study on the Holy Spirit, you need to chew up upside down, turn it around the book of Acts because this is Holy Spirit's, I mean, this is where we are today. The book of Acts is not completed. It's not over. The book of Acts will not be over until the church is raptured. Amen. And that's because this is detailing how Holy Spirit operates with the church, his ecclesia. Amen. Okay. Acts chapter 9. And we're going to take a look at a few examples of word of knowledge in operation. Okay. Let me see where I'm going to start at. Let's start at verse 10. It says, and there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias... And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus, 
Watch this. For behold, he prayeth and has seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. Now, Ananias had no natural understanding or revelation that Saul was here in this place. The only way he now he got it because of a vision. God used the vehicle of a vision in order to give him information about Saul. But the key thing here in the word of knowledge that was given is that and he prayeth. He told him where he was and he prayeth. That was a word of knowledge to Ananias regarding Paul and it came through a vision. So that's letting you know that you can get a word of knowledge from the Holy Spirit in a vision, even in a dream. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Or you can just be standing, you can be sitting watching television. All of a sudden the Holy Spirit will drop something on you. Boom. We have to recognize which of the revelatory gifts it is that we're dealing with at the time. The journey of spirits, word of wisdom, word of knowledge. And that's why we have to go through this, okay, so that we can, as a body, believe and understand how God works with this, bring it back to our remembrance, because I already know you've been taught this, but now it's even more important that we we go, that we review it, that we go back through it, bring it back to the forefront of our thinking under the direction of the Holy Spirit, because evidently we're going to be needing it in these last days, particularly with all the crazy stuff that is going on uh, in the earth. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And God needs to have a, if God can get a word of knowledge to you and then he uses you to minister to somebody, that person can come to know Jesus Christ because you are open to receive a word of knowledge from the Holy Spirit. And this whole thing is all about getting souls in the kingdom. Amen. Amen. Nothing else matters. Everything else pales in comparison when it comes to the things of God, not when it comes to things of God, when it comes to the earth and to the world, apart from getting people into the kingdom of God. Amen. Especially as we detail and begin to have more revelation of what is going to take place during that last week of Daniel's 70 weeks. Amen. I covered that last Sunday about the 70 weeks just to just to make sure everybody's on the right, you know, got their clock set, as it were. We had to be synchronized. Amen. The body of Christ likes like spies, you know, let's synchronize my time to your time so we can pull this, this job off. Well, we have to be synchronized with God so we can pull off this job that God wants us to pull off in the earth. Amen. Amen. Anybody agree with me on that? Amen. Anybody ready to be, to get synchronized with the Holy Spirit and what God is trying to do in the earth right now? Amen. Praise his holy name. Okay. Let's take a look at another example of uh, word of knowledge being given. Let's go to Acts, let's back up, to, let's go over to Acts chapter 10. And we're going to start looking at verse 9 here in Acts chapter 10. It says, And on the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh to into the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. And he became very hungry and would have eaten, but while they made ready, he fell into a trance and saw heaven opened and a certain vessel descending unto him as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and let down to the earth, wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air, and there came a voice to him, rise, Peter, kill and eat. Peter said, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And in verse 15, and he says, and the voice spake unto him again the second time, what God has cleansed, 
that call not thou common. Amen. This was done thrice, three times, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. Now, while Peter doubted in himself what this vision which he had seen should mean, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate and called and asked whether Simon, which was surnamed Peter, was lodged there. Now, understand, Peter's up there in a trance. You don't know what's going on downstairs in the house, right? Amen. He doesn't have a clue as to what's happening. He doesn't know that these guys are there inquiring. He is dealing with what he just saw. He's in a trance. He hasn't a clue. It's just like right now. We're sitting here in the sanctuary. We don't know what's going on down, uh, uh, down the hall in one of the classrooms or in one of the other rooms. We don't know, right? He didn't know what was happening. Then it goes on and says, uh, yeah, here we go. Verse 19, while Peter thought on the vision, the spirit said unto him, and here's the word of knowledge. And this is the fact that God is revealing to him. God knew that these guys were there, right? He didn't know. So now the Holy Spirit tells him, behold, three men seek thee. Three men seek thee. That was a word of knowledge. That was Holy Spirit telling him. See, we, we see this, we don't realize what is actually taking place. We just think what God is talking, what Holy Spirit is talking to him. Yeah, but what's actually, what's the manifestation of Holy Spirit talking? It's the word of knowledge. God had knowledge of these three men. Peter didn't. So now it's a fact that these three men are there. Peter has no clue. So Holy Spirit tells him, behold, three men are waiting for you. Three men seek thee here. Okay? So he arises, arise in verse 19. While Peter thought on them, verse 20, arise therefore and get thee down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Boom. Word of knowledge. These three men are there. That's why he gets up and goes. Had not the Holy Spirit said anything, he'd still be up there dealing with what he just saw. Word of knowledge moved on him or was given to him from the mind of God. Okay? Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. Let's take a look at another one. Let's go to 1 Samuel. Let's take a look at some word of knowledge. Don't think that word of knowledge is only uh, set for a New Testament. <laughs> Holy Spirit was working back in the Old Testament too. You do recognize that, right? Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 9. Praise his name. 1 Samuel chapter 9. And we're going to take a look at starting at verse 3. I'm going to skip a few things here. I'll wait for you to get there. 1 Samuel chapter 9. Hallelujah. And in verse 3 it says, And the asses of Kish Saul's father were lost. Mm -hmm. And Kish said to Saul his son, Take now one of the servants with thee, and arise and go seek thy asses. Verse 5. And when they were come to the land of Zuth, Saul said to his servant that was with him, come and let us return, lest my father leave caring for the asses and take thought for us. In other words, let's get back because we've been gone. Let's get back before he gets to worrying about us, even though he's already worried about these asses and these donkeys. Let's drop down to verse 15. Says, now the Lord had told Samuel in his ear a day before Saul came, saying, Tomorrow, about this time, I will send thee a man out of the land of Benjamin, and thou shalt anoint him to be captain over my people Israel, that he may save my people out of the hand of the Philistines. For I have looked upon my people because their, their cry is come unto me. Let's take a look at verse 19. 
And Samuel answered Saul and said, I am the seer. Go up before me unto the high place where you shall eat with me today and tomorrow. I will let thee go and I will tell thee all that is in thine heart. Verse 20, key verse for what we're dealing with today. And as for thine asses that were lost three days ago, set not thy mind on them for they are found. And on whom it is all desire of Israel, is it not on thee and all of thy father's house? What's the word of knowledge? The asses are found. He had no idea. He did not know. He knew he was given a word from God about it. And there's some other things that's taking place in this passage of scripture too. That is a manifestation of the gifts of the spirit. And when we get to one of the next gift, one of the other gifts, we may come back to this and then show you how they are working together. Amen. Amen. All right. So understanding the word of knowledge is facts in the mind of God that is revealed by the Holy Spirit to you and to I, myself, amen, and others who are sensitive, that sensitive to the move of the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Let's take another, let's take a look at Jesus. Let's go to John chapter four. So we can see how Jesus operating in the earth as a man flowed with word of knowledge by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Everybody, whatever Jesus did, that's what I want to do. That's what they say. Until it's time to actually do it. All right. John chapter four. This is going to be a very familiar um, passage of scripture. Glory to God. And so let's start at verse 7. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. But his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? Because you had some, for lack, you had some animosity between two people groupings. Amen. Even though the Sumerians were half Jewish, they were still considered to be different. What they would say today was that you had some racism going on. Amen. But we understand that there's only one race and that's the human race. So you had these two ethnic groups, these two people groups that didn't like each other. Okay. How is it that thou, being a Jew, ask drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Okay. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that says to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given the living water. That's very interesting because I'm just really seeing this right now. And it's really not a great revelation, but it's an interesting point. The Holy Spirit is just showing me that it's very clear that she has no operation or word of knowledge in this instance. <laughs> Because she don't know who he is. <laughs> Amen. Verse 11. Actually, yeah, verse 11. And the woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep from whence then hast thou that living water. Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well and drank thereof himself and of his children and his cattle? And Jesus answered unto her, Whosoever drinketh, of this water shall thirst again, referring to the natural water. Okay? But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water, that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus said unto her, Go, call thy husband, and come hither. Now keep in mind, Jesus is operating not as the all-knowing, omnipresent God, right? 
That's not how he's operating as Jesus in the earth. He's operating with, with, with natural limitations, just like we are, but because he is in because he's anointed by God, just like we are, he is sensitive to the Holy Spirit, like we should be, which then puts him in a position to operate above the natural plane like we're supposed to. Amen. You see, we shouldn't have to be trying to convince ourselves or trying to, to uh, yeah, convince ourselves to be the supernatural church. That's what we are. So that's what we are. We are already supernatural because we are anointed by God. Are you listening to me? Anybody here anointed by God? Amen. So that means that you already supernatural or should be operating supernaturally. Hmm? Glory to God. Jesus is not operating as the omnipresent, all-knowing God while he was on the earth. Operating just like you, just like I do. Amen? He got up in the morning, bad breath. Right? Got up in the morning, had to bathe. Right? Went to bed, had, you know, had to do what he had to do. All the functions, everything that you do as a natural human being, he did as a natural Jesus. 100% man. Anointed by the Holy Ghost, completely sold out and listening to the Spirit. All right? So, verse 16 again. Jesus said unto her, go call thy husband and come hither. So he's assuming that she has a husband. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. And Jesus said unto her, thou hast well said, I have no husband. But thou hast had five husbands. Thou hast what? Had five husbands. Wouldn't that put that in a position of being a fact? Yeah. The fact is that she had five husbands. She's not talking about a future husband, but a husband she's already had. For thou hast had five husbands, and, the whom, and he whom thou now has is not thy husband. In that, in that saidest thou truly. That right there is a manifestation of the word of knowledge by the Holy Ghost through Jesus. Go get your husband. She answers, he says, you said truly, because you've already had five husbands. How is he going to know that? Well, he was Jesus. No, that's not how he knew it. He didn't know it because he was Jesus. When people say that, they're saying because he was Jesus. He's God. Da, da, da. No, he's not, we got to get out of our mind the fact that he's operating like God. He's operating like man. He had no, he didn't have any knowledge of that unless the Holy Spirit gave it to him. If the Holy Spirit gave it to him, something that was a fact that was in the mind of the Father God, then now it's a word of knowledge to him. Amen. Now he flowed in that a whole lot because he was, and, and, and when you look at Jesus' life and you read through and look at Jesus' life and look at how many times this operation took place, and he wants us to operate like him. So that must mean that this operation should be operating in us just like it was operating in Jesus when we are tuned to the Holy Spirit. For thou hast had five husbands, and he, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Now, we're going to take a look at uh, one more here. Praise the Lord. Because my time is running out. Let's go to Acts chapter 5. Thank you, Lord. I think you're getting enough on the word of knowledge to begin to understand, right, how this, is, how this operates, how it operated in the examples that we looked at and how to operate with you and what it actually is, facts in the mind of God revealed to you by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Regarding something you don't have any clue about. Thank you, Lord. This is why Paul said, hey, I do not want you to be ignorant 
about these things. This is information that you must have, particularly in these perilous times. Okay, Acts chapter 5, and let's take a look at verse 1. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter and Anna said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and keep back part of the price of the land? Wow. <laughs> How did he know that? See, this was word of knowledge operating right here with Peter in this dealing with Ananias. Holy Spirit told him. Now, I want you to see just how many times when Holy Spirit tells someone something that has already taken place, what it actually is. What is that manifestation? Amen. And from this point forward, as you look and study the word, and particularly as you go through the book of Acts, and you, I want you to be able to recognize these instances when they come up so that it will alert you immediately that was word of knowledge. That was word of knowledge. Why? What's that going to help you do? That's going to help you in your daily life recognize when God has given you something and you have actually operated in this gift, the word of knowledge. No goosebumps, no hair standing on the back of your neck, no jumping around and doing none of that stuff. Just flow. And then at the same time, recognize what's going on. There's, there's, you know, there's, there's, there is, you can, there's a difference in doing something and then recognizing what it is that you're doing. You follow what I'm saying? You can do certain things and still not have a revelation of what you are really doing or what is really taking place. What are the mechanics? See, these gifts of the Spirit become the mechanics of God working through you. Word of knowledge. This is how he's doing it. He, this is what this is. And as you understand that, it will build up, should build up your confidence even more so in you flowing in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Hmm? He said, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and keep back part of the price of the land? Verse four, while it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not thine own under thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart that th thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God? He didn't have to say that. He was under no compulsion to give them all of the money. But what was he doing? He was trying to make himself look like he was something. Amen. He was trying to build himself up in the eyes of the apostles, the disciples. Well, you know, Ananias sold that property. He brought all the money in. He's looking for accolades from men. All he had to do, and this is what Peter is telling him, he said, all you had to do, you had to lie. Oh, you, well, you sold it for 100000 okay? You're going to give 50000 to us? Praise the Lord. We received the 50000 That's all he had to do. Well, I sold it for 100000 Here's fifty. But no, he says, I sold it for 100. I sold it for 50. Here's the 50 when he sold it for 100. You see what I'm saying? He didn't have to do that. He said in his heart to them, did Peter know that he, did he sold it that way? No. Only reason he knew is because there was a word of knowledge that God gave him to let him know what Ananias had done and it, and it had lied to the Holy Spirit and it cost him his natural life. His natural life, amen? Hallelujah, praise God. All right. Now, we're going to get into Wednesday night. I'm going to get into the, 
gift of the word of wisdom, give some examples of how that operates, and hopefully I'll be able to give some examples as to how both word of knowledge and word of wisdom operate together. So we can see, and you may be able to see in your own life how you operate it even with both of these gifts, gifts, and they work in concert. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. We just need to get more, have more recognition of what Holy Spirit is really doing in us as we go throughout these perilous times and walk in victory in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's give God some praise. Amen. Father, we thank you. We praise you and we give you glory and we give you honor. We thank you for this opportunity today to sow the seed of the word into the hearts of your people. And we give you all the praise and all of the glory for it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Every head bowed just for a moment. Every eye closed. Every head bowed for a moment. Every eye closed. No one walking or talking unless you have so been assigned to do so. Praise the Lord. If you're here or you're watching today and you have not received the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart, into your life, this is the day of salvation. Tomorrow is not promised to you. Amen. You want to make sure that you have received the Lord Jesus Christ. There is only one way to the Father, and that way is through Jesus. Praise the Lord. There are many, particularly in this day and in this hour, that believe that they can get to, to the Father. Father, they can get to heaven through uh, uh, Buddha or through Hare Krishna or through some other false religion. Amen. You have people who are actually committing suicide and killing themselves thinking that that is going to get them into heaven. No, not so. There is only one way. And Jesus said to himself, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man comes but to the Father but by me. Hallelujah. And so this is your opportunity in this service today, during this stream, praise the Lord, to come into the family of God. Praise the Lord. The Word of God tells us that if you confess the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, then you shall be saved. So this is what I want you to do. If you in your heart you want to believe and receive the Lord Jesus, I want you to repeat after me this prayer. I want you to just say it out loud so your own ears can hear it and meet it from your heart and you will be born again today in Jesus name. Just say, Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe that he died for me on Calvary's tree. I believe that he rose again from the dead and that you set him at your own right hand. I believe that he suffered hell for three nights. In my, place, in my place, being the propitiation, being the propitiation for, my sin. for my sin. I believe, I believe that your word says that, your word that if I confess the Lord Jesus with my mouth and believe in my heart, I shall be saved. I shall be saved. Lord, Jesus, Lord Jesus, I confess you right now. I confess you right now as my Lord. As my Lord. My master, my master, my savior. My savior. Lord, Jesus, Lord Jesus, come into my heart now. Come into my heart now. Save me now. Save me now. I repent of sin. I repent of sin. And I turn away from it. And I turn away from it. And I thank you, Father. And I thank you, Father. That I am right now. That I am right now. Born again. Born again. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Praise God forevermore. <laughs> if you prayed that prayer from your heart today and you meant it, then guess what? You are part of the family of God and we want to say welcome to you today. Yeah, and understand yeah. this, that the word of God tells us that when a person comes to the Lord Jesus, that the very angels of God begin to rejoice and celebrate. In other words, there is a party being set in your honor right now in heaven. Praise God. And the angels are rejoicing because you are part of the family. Hallelujah. Now, I want to encourage you to find yourself a good church. A church is going to teach you the word of God. Amen. Line upon line, precept upon precept, in a way in which 
you'll understand so that you can grow in the word of God, grow into a tree of righteousness, be the planting of the Lord that God will get glory from your life. Hallelujah. Find your good church is going to teach you the word of God. Amen. Become a member of it. Praise the Lord. Receive a pastor into your, into your life. Jesus said that every sheep needs a shepherd. In other words, every believer needs to have a pastoral covering, someone that will pray for them, watch out for them, look out for them, and train them in the things of God. Hallelujah. If you'd like to be connected to our ministry and be a part of us virtually, you can do so. Praise the Lord. Just send us an email at the email address that you see there on the screen, prayer at wofglobal.com, and we will respond to you forthwith. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Praise his holy name. We want to say congratulations to you and your life is going to be changed insurmountably. And God is going to get great glory from you. And at the same time, he is going to bring you up and raise you up to a level of which you cannot even fathom or dream about. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Well, glory to God. It is offering time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Of course, if you're in the sanctuary and you desire an offering number, Love, there should be one in front of you in the pew or behind you. Praise the Lord. Otherwise, if you are watching the stream, you can sow electronically through the various methods that you see there on the screen. We have our cash app. We have PayPal. And also you can sow through our website at wofglobal.com. Hallelujah. The word of God tells us to give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Pressed down and shaken together and running over shall men pour under your bosom but with the same measure that you meet it shall be measured unto you again amen yeah. hallelujah now if you are a member of another church you make sure that you reserve your tithe for your home church Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. But you can sow a seed of offering here to Word of Faith Global Ministries. I'm going to read from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, starting at verse 8. It says, And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always have all sufficiency in all things, that you may abound to every good work. Verse 10, now he that ministers seed to the sower will both minister bread for your food and will multiply your seed sown and will increase the fruits of your righteousness. The seed that you are sowing today, God will increase it. He will multiply it as you sow as a cheerful giver. Amen. Verse 6 of that same chapter says, but this I say, he was so sparingly shall reap also sparingly. He was so bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart. We understand the tithe is 10%. That belongs to God. No, don't have to pray about it. Don't have to get uh, any, any other information about it. It belongs to God. But when it comes to an offering, that's when you say, Lord, how much is it that you want me to sow? As far as the offering is concerned, every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give not grudgingly or of necessity for God loves a cheerful giver. Praise the Lord. Amen. God wants you to be cheerful in your giving. And that is when verses 8 and 10 begin to kick in for that individual who is a cheerful giver. Praise the Lord. Well, I trust that you have done or are doing what it is that you are going to do regarding the offering this morning. Let's lift it up to our great high priest, the Lord Jesus, whether you have an envelope or whether you have an electronic device or what have you. Let's lift it up to our great high priest, the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Heavenly, get in agreement with this prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you and I praise you and give you glory for those who are sowing seed today into the kingdom of God through the good ground here at Word of Faith. I thank you, Father, that because of it, lives shall be changed. People shall be saved, filled with your precious Holy Spirit. Families brought back together, cities, states, and nations, one to the Lord Jesus Christ. The Word of God published and produced uh, globally. The signal set and sent out regarding your Word and the, and, and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father, that those things are done and so. Angels, we release you to go forth right now and bring our return unto us. For we have me 
need of it for the kingdom of God's sake as well as our own. And so we thank you today for it and give you all the glory, give you all of the honor in the mighty and in the matchless name of Jesus. And all in agreement said, amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise God forevermore. Now, of course, you can, if you're going to sow a seed um, uh, through the envelope today, then at the end of service, you can drop it in the receptacle as you uh, exit the building in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Well, I trust you were blessed by the word today in the name of Jesus and uh, look forward to being on. Come, don't forget to join in with us on the stream on Wednesday night as we continue and get into the word of wisdom. And uh, also join us again next Sunday as well in person or through video or through the streaming. And uh, it's going to be a tremendous blessing as we continue to march through the gifts of the spirit so that we can be fully equipped to carry out what God has in our hearts to do in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Praise God. You are dismissed in Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah.